For the past couple months now, I've been shooting on the GH7 more and more, but this really kind of made me question, should you upgrade from the GH6, if you already own this camera, to the GH7, or which one of these cameras should you buy, the GH6, or the GH7? And I'm gonna be answering that question in this video. So the first thing we should touch point on is gonna be the price. Editing Matthew here with a quick disclaimer, the GH6 is actually officially discontinued, so you can only buy it brand new at a few places online, but it seems like the only way to get a GH6 now is gonna be on the used market. So if you wanna pick up a GH6, I would check out where places have it discounted or used products or refurbished products. That is where you're gonna be able to buy the GH6, which will be dipping down a lot in the price, making it a lot more affordable. Now, if you guys wanna see more content about the GH6, let me know in the comments below because I personally am considering selling my personal GH6. So if you are interested in also getting the GH6, let me know that as well in the comments below. But I might be selling this camera. So if you wanna see any more videos about the GH6 here on this channel, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyways, I'll let you get back to the rest of the video. The next thing is the physical build. So with both these cameras, they are designed the exact same to a T. The front record button, the tally lights, the front function buttons, the audio button, the lock switch, the flip up and flip out screen, which is something I miss so much shooting on the S52X. This is so nice. Oh my gosh. CF Express Type B card, the ST card, the bigger overall grip on this camera. This is one of my favorite body designs from Lumix so far on the GH6 and the GH7. But nextly, we're moving on to the video specs, which things start slowly taking a turn, but not by much. For the most part, all the pro res, the all intra, the long ops settings are the exact same. The only key features that the GH7 has over the GH6 really comes down to the raw capability. So the GH7 can shoot Apple pro res raw, which if you're a final cut editor and you, or you just want pro res raw functionality internally inside this camera, well, the GH7 can do that. You can get the ProRes RAW features and functionality externally via an Atomos monitor. You can still shoot B-RAW on both these cameras externally on a monitor. But for ProRes RAW, if you want it internally, you want a weather sealed camera still, the GH7 does have that capability. But at the end of the day, the video specs are the exact same across the board. But which continues to the next point is the image quality. Now, with these two cameras, the image quality is very, very different. The GH7 has a brand new sensor using the, the new technology of the PDAF or phase detect autofocus inside this camera. Meaning when you shoot in vlog and color grade the clips the exact same, the image at the end of the day will look different between these two cameras. Now, both these clips I am color grading with my own personal classic teal and orange LUT. You can use the code DANE15 for 15% off in the link to the description if you want to check out my LUTs that I sell for vlog. Images look very different. On the GH6, it's producing a much warmer, softer image overall. Meanwhile, on the GH7, is it's a little bit cooler, it's a little bit more sharp. Granted, you can change these things within post. You can warm up your image in post. You can add diffusion in post or pitting a diffusion filter in front of the lens itself. So you can make these adjustments on the GH7 to produce that similar image of the GH6. But just right off the bat with the exact same color grades, the GH6 has a much warmer and softer looking image. And in my personal opinion, it's just a more pleasing image than the GH7, which is kind of backwards. You get a new camera and you expect the image to look better, which subjectively it can to some people, but Personally, I think the warmer, softer tones from the GH6 is nicer, which leads me to the next point though, is the autofocus. And the GH7 is the clear winner here. You sacrifice a little bit of that image quality, but you get amazing autofocus in return. This autofocus is on par with the S52X, the S52, the G9 Mark II. The phase detect autofocus is next level in this camera. On top of that, they added a couple more autofocus settings like train and plane. Then there is multiple different settings within each individual autofocus setting. The autofocus just, just keeps getting better and better with each integration of the Lumix cameras. 
So if you are using autofocus or you need autofocus, then the GH7 definitely would be the clear winner here. And before moving on the comparison, one other thing I'd like to add, using the brand new XLR2 unit, you can get 32-bit flow internal recording. Now, this is an extra $500. You can put it on top of the camera and get true 32-bit flow recording baked into your video clips, which is really, really nice. Hey, another quick interruption, guys. If you've been enjoying this content, you should definitely consider subscribing. I've been making content all about Lumix cameras for the past couple of years now, and I have really, really gotten to know these cameras on the back of my hand. So if you want to see more content about the S5 2X, S9, GH7, G9 Mark II, and you want to just learn how to master and use your Lumix camera, definitely consider subscribing. Now, before we get into the last comparison, a couple other bonus features that the GH7 does have over the GH6. The first one is proxy and frame.io integration. So if you want to record proxy clips and have two clips that you can edit and switch your proxies really fast, you can do that. And the frame.io being able to have your RAWs, your JPEGs and proxy clips in real time with a Wi-Fi connection and have your videos and photos get posted online to a remote editor so they can edit it in real time is really clutch depending if you are a event filmmaker or even a wedding filmmaker. This can be a really, really clutch feature. Nextly is low light. Personally, these cameras do perform very similar, but the GH7 has it already baked in with the dynamic range boost mode. Meanwhile, on the GH6, you have to manually do your dynamic range boost mode. Personally, I just kind of like it working automatically and not making me choose when or when I don't want to use it. It just works right off the bat without me touching it. Now, lastly is stabilization. Now the GH7 has a lot more options in terms of electronic stabilization. The IBIS is 7.5 stops of stabilization, but when you are using the electronic stabilization, which I've been using more and more on Lumix cameras with the recent firmware updates and what these features are getting, you get standard and high electronic stabilization. Meanwhile, in the GH6, it's kind of a, you turn it on or you turn it off there's not as much control you don't know how much it's cropping in i feel like overall you're gonna get really really stabilized shots with either of these cameras but if whatever reason you basically don't want a gimbal at all the gh7 is definitely getting closer and closer to a gimbal and the gh6 isn't that far behind either it's just a little bit more control on the gh7 now the gh6 in my personal opinion minus the autofocus does have one big flaw which is streaking now some people online say they've never experienced streaking and some people say they experience it all the time personally i've only experienced it a small handful of times and this was on a client project when i was shooting product videos and i was throwing tennis balls on a bag and there was noticeable streaking going on inside this image and the issue wasn't when the streaking was coming up it was more or less the fact that streaking could happen when you were on a shoot when you are on a paid shoot and that was one big issue with me with the gh6 I didn't know when it was gonna happen. I had some ideas, but sometimes when I was in a high contrast situation, the GH6 wouldn't streak, and then other times it would. It just was more of a fear factor in the back of my mind. Is my camera about to start having streaking issues or is it not? So that leads me into my final thoughts. If you have the money, I would personally recommend getting the GH7. It's just more reliable. It's not gonna streak on you. The autofocus better, the stabilization is better. In my own opinion, I would say get the GH7 if you have the money. Now, should you upgrade if you already own the GH6? Well, the first thing I would say is, do you want better performing autofocus? Do you want phase detect autofocus? And if that answer is yes, you want the highest performing autofocus that a Micro Four Third camera can get you, then yes, get the GH7 if you have the money, you're willing to sell your GH6 and you want that reliable autofocus, you don't want any streaking. But if you are okay with pulling focus, if you're okay and you don't deal with any streaking issues, you're okay with all of that, then I would say the GH6 is more than good enough right now. I wouldn't see that there's any reason to get the GH7 unless you need that extra bit of flexibility and features like phase attack, 32-bit float recording, and you want those extra bells and whistles, then it might make sense. But I would love to hear your guys' comments in the description below. If you had to pick the GH6 or the GH7, which one should you buy? Are you considering upgrading? Let me know in the comments below. But if you wanna see a video where I'm comparing the GH7 versus the G9 Mark II, check out that video right there. And then YouTube recommends you might like this video right here. Until the next one, guys, peace.